not going to make wrong. Commission commences must comment song, must be a problems to be ironed out, which is the reason for the delay, for which I apologize. It appears from the squawking noises we heard that they haven't all been sorted out, but I hope we won't have that again. Mr. I understand you're going to call the next witness. But before you do so, Testing. Testing. Yes, Danny. Can, can you move over, Danny? Well, I, it sounds as if the sensible thing for us to do is to adjourn and come back when we receive an assurance that everything's been sorted out because it's no good having this echo which makes it difficult to hear what's said. Well, I don't know if the problem's been sorted out. Has it been sorted out? Yes. All right. Okay, well, finally, we're getting underway. As I've said, I apologize that we started late, but there were technical problems that persisted up to the very last minute that required solution. Mr. Matabedi, I understand you're going to call the next witness. May but before you do so, I understand Mr. Mpofu wishes to say something. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. And I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we don't need but the witness on screen during this application. Yes, I, I, there is a difficulty that Chair, that the witness is on the screen, and I think it would be helpful if parties were reminded of the of your rulings in relation to disclosure of the identity of mistakes. Perhaps before Mr. I should um, read out to, the, to remind everybody the rulings that I made. When I considered the application for the evidence of Mr. Oh, Mr. X to be heard, firstly from a remote video, uh, through a, a video link from a remote location, and secondly for us to sit in, in, in camera. The rulings I made um, were the following. One, the evidence of Mr. X be presented in camera and by video link. Two, that at all times during the testimony of Mr. X, one of the evidence leaders should be present in the room from which he testifies. Three, that only the commissioners, the parties, the legal representatives, the evidence leaders, and accredited media representatives shall be present 
in the auditorium during the testimony of Mr. X. Gedi kwa sheti taka umtegazulo Mr. X kuyaba um ijaji na commissioner zal na ba meli ba onge amakela na ba bonge abando abanya ba bande kanya kaya ukulendo lena apa bule olose kuyo abanya abavu nyende. That at least two weeks prior to the commencement of the testimony of Mr. X, the SAPS legal representatives shall a disclose the name of Mr. X to the evidence leaders and the legal representatives of all the parties. B. Provide the evidence leaders and the legal representatives of the parties with a photograph of Mr. X. And C. Indicate to the evidence leaders and the legal representatives of the parties all points at which they have been able to identify Mr. X on video footage of the events during the period 13 to 16 August 2012. That the details in paragraphs 4A to C above shall be disclosed, this is paragraph 5, that the details in paragraphs 4A to C above shall be disclosed only to the commissioners, the evidence leaders and to the legal representatives who require the information in order to obtain instructions from their clients. That neither the name nor any information that may reveal the identity of Mr. X shall be disclosed further by any party other than the SAPs, save for the purpose of obtaining instructions. Seven, the subject to the rulings made in paragraphs 4, 5 and 6 above, in terms of sections 18 and 19 of the Witness Protection Act, 112 of 1998, the following shall be prohibited. A. The publication of any information, including any drawing, picture, illustration, painting, photograph, pamphlet, poster or other printed matter in whatever form. Which may disclose the place of safety or location where Mr. X is. Has or where he has been relocated in terms of the act. The circumstances relating to his protection. No meko akusele pansu akusele The identity of any other protected person and the place of safety or location where such person is being protected or the relocation or change of identity of a protected person. D, any questioning of Mr. X which can lead to disclosure of any of the matters referred to in paragraphs A, B and C, that's the three I've just read. That members of the public may listen to the audio transmission of the testimony of Mr. X in the overflow room. overflow <laughs> room. That members of the media may not publish the name of Mr. X or any other information which may reveal his identity. And ten, that all video recordings of the evidence of Mr. X must be blurred out so as not to disclose his identity. Now, 
ingubani lindot. Um, I've decided to add a further ruling, which is as follows, that because the proceedings are, I understand, being broadcast, counsel shall not refer to the witness by his name during the course of his evidence, whether in chief or in under, while he's under cross-examination. Chairperson also ex Abudante Kautela, the statements which will be revealed on the website where they bear reference to his identity also ought to be uh, redacted. Redacted in such a way that his identity is not revealed. Yes, yeah, I'll make a ruling to that effect also. Not only his name, but other material from which his identity can be ascertained. We are sure of Panum Fanegis or Ungavers or Manga Pindela, Utumkin is Lalo Ewen, Shogangalo Neka Malak and Ebizo, Sfan in a younger Indo as a confess of Obanguban in Mainga Papash. Some of the statements which we have been given indicate details such as his address and, and so forth, which obviously must also uh, not be revealed. We are in that future. Yes. statement as as badly the apple apple the corner go ba um 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 to agu pe eklaleni as na ufundo apa sfanelangu ba tizde papa shenas. Mr. Mpofu. Magasi ve umtega zi umpofu. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm indebted to you and the commissioners for giving me this opportunity. Um, let me say up front, a person, that I, I appeal for uh, a thorough considerations of the issues that I'm going to raise, because there are quite weighty issues <coughs> which have been specifically instructed to raise uh, before the evidence of Mr. X's head. Uh, that is so, uh, Chairperson and Commissioners, <coughs> because your rulings on this matter will have a material bearing on the nature and content of Mr. X's evidence. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'd call this a preliminary objection in the sense that uh, the, instead of raising the objections as and when the statements which I'm going to refer to are sought to be, to be used, we thought it might be prudent and more time saving to, 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 to raise the, the objection in a generalized fashion up front. The, the issues uh, in the objection chair relate to um, documents which SAPS has submitted <coughs> as uh, intended to be used uh, in the evidence in chief of Mr. X. And the, the, the broad issues relate to two interrelated uh, concepts, Chairperson, uh, of relevance and admissibility. Uh, but before I, I deal with those uh, concepts, I'd just like to paint very briefly the, the factual background uh, of, of um, which brought us to, to this stage. Chairperson, <coughs> uh, as um, you know, we, we received last year Mr. X's statement without names, with the names uh, having been uh, blocked out. Uh, 
by the names, I mean the names of those people which he implicated or referred to. Di teta genga nanga magama abo bandu be teta ngabo eba veza apa be krimi we nao. Eventually, last week we received uh, the unblocked statement of Mr. X with the names contained. Le vige kritile yoge ka kufelo kogbango ba ni ka tete aba bandu a teta ngabo umteka so X. This enabled us to consult for the first time uh, with, uh, at this stage, about 15 to 20 people, individuals, which, which are, who are mentioned in the statements. Those consultations uh, went on until quite late yesterday. Uh, we still have a few people outstanding, but that's not relevant for the purposes of the people. We also, Chairperson, had to wade through large volumes of paper which were supplied by SAPS last week. So, I found again my paper. I'm a ninja, greater as one nigga, so I'm going to be able to get in the course of the foregoing chairperson, uh, it is unrelevant to what uh, we are raising now. It has transpired that one, there are confessions which were made by some of our clients in the context of criminal proceedings, which are pending before the criminal courts. <laughs> Is statement and uh, for the purposes of what I'm saying now, it 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 will not matter much whether uh, strictly legally speaking those state statements uh, amount to confessions or mere admissions. The point is simply that they are self-incriminatory statements. These uh, criminal cases that I've referred to Chairperson involve very serious charges including attempted murder, murder, arson, public violence and the like. And uh, in some cases, uh, the persons are implicated or implicate each other or implicate themselves in more than one such uh, act of either murder, arson, or public violence. In any event, to be clear from the commissioners, just from the nature of the kinds of issues we are dealing with in the commission, that um, the such charges as I have referred to would in any event be serious charges. It might well be important a person to point out that um, that it might well be important to point out that there, there is a, a kind of direct relationship between those criminal cases and the proceedings of the commission.
like the microphone is back on again, Mr. Pofu, so you can continue. Ah, it's a good thing. I'm here as a Pofu, so we them. Thank you, Chairperson. I was just busy with the, my last point on what I've called the factual background, namely that. Uh, Will you carry on? May I say it's not necessary for us to have the picture of the Mr. X on the screen at the moment. Yes. Um, it's Manchester. gone now, and it, it, may, it can stay away until we we need it. Thank you. So some fun eggs or good to figure that she up or says ding a corner, ding a little bit. A bear corner and go up higher. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the, the point that I wanted to mention was that, uh, so, well, not some, all of the of the criminal cases that I've referred to, excuse me, including the uh, big one of the 272 persons, has have been um, postponed for trial pending the outcome of the of the commission. Mandi Bega, but Ikala El Kulu Nichong and Nana, Rabanda Bango, two hundred and seventy two. Leave me Lebango, Lime, or Gwenzi Waste, Bogule Commission. Now, with that background in mind, Chaperson, uh, the, the issue really, maybe just to jump towards the end, is to request the, the, the Commission or to uphold our objection to the use of the statements um, that I've described. And Man. we'll, we'll supply a, a short list uh, of, the, of the statements. They're not, uh, but they involve about five individuals. Man, the Chogba is still a Samo Gogba as a statement, as young and Ababandu, Babega Amajala Payasinga Sessions is so up. Kabandu and Ababa Sanu. Right. Now, the legal basis, Chaperson, for this is, is uh, I would like to start by, by defining what I've called the related concepts of uh, um, admissibility and, rel and relevance. Man, beg a pambili, this is to end this choy gogba, this is as ends of gogba, and then this is to gogba, as I'm getting a loop of trouble. At its most basic, uh, as it is tried, Chaperson, that relevance simply means that uh, evidence which is not relevant to the issues shall not be admitted. Gogtala, yinto enga, but uh, in the broader sense, uh, relevance has been described as, um, I'm, I'm reading from Zafet's book at 237. <coughs> It's the latest edition, obviously. The, the latest, page, yes. The second, second edition, Chaperson, yes. Yes. Yeah, what, page? Off, uh, what page? What uh, page? Yes, page 240. Uh, sorry, South I'm sorry. African I'm reading law. a 237 at this stage. 240 later. Yaofunda Makasa Mabili 237 or 240. The introductory part says simply this chairperson which is just a repetition of what i've just said the criterion of relevance is applied to evidence in both a positive and a negative form that is to say it is generally true that relevant evidence is admissible and irrelevant evidence is inadmissible <laughs> Each of these propositions will need some qualification, but before the two sides of the coin are examined in detail, something must be said about the meaning of relevance in the law of evidence. Then under the heading, the meaning of relevance, the authors say the re relevance is essentially a matter of reason and common sense. As Shrana J.A. Uh, said, it is, quote, based upon a blend of logic and experience lying outside the law. The American Law Institute's model code of evidence defines relevant evidence as, quote, evidence having any tendency in reason to prove any material matter. 
ngenyanyana kokuba into ethize yenzekile iphathelene nalo nto kuthethwa ngayo ngelo xesha and and uh, so, so I, i'm going to deal with with it as i say chairperson both in its narrow uh, context and that broader context as explained by Shriner and the american code uthi uzakwe uzithinta zombili ke umhleka zombovu njengoba uja Shriner ezibeka kuwamabili amajala athetha ngawo and if you allow me chairperson just to read uh, at from two, at 240 to 241 of and the same book it's, it's not very long but it it it, it will save a lot of time and in afunda nje hapa ihlenze izimbili 240 and 41 and not at the authors here say relevance as the law sees it or should see it is a function of two variables of which logical relevance quote the tendency in reason to prove any material matter according to the common sensible present day standards based on experience is but one bega ngolo hlobo nje ngoba bayichazile kokuba mayijonge ngolubu hlobo ukuze kubona kokuba iphathelene nale nto kuthethwa ngayo the other is the extent to which the reception of evidence is for various reasons undesirable kwesibinike ukuthi xa ingavezwa mhlawumbe ngezizathu ezithize apho ingafanele kokuba iyivezwe khona the court will require a high degree of relevance before it will receive evidence which involves a lengthy investigation of collateral issues or is likely to cause prejudice or confusion or raise difficult questions of credibility or whose reception would materially involve any other serious disadvantage. Ntige ikhotho noma mhlawumbe uphando olijengolo ufayele ucingisise nyani oko kuba lo nto ngaphambi kokuba yamkelwa kokuba inako na kokuba ide idlele indlala omnye ngendlela ingafanele. On the other hand, evidence which does not have these disadvantages will often be admitted as a matter of convenience even though its relevance may be fairly slight. Uthike xa kungekho kudla lendlala iyamkelwa into njengaleyo noma isisindo sobo kungena singe ngako. The test is essentially a practical one. The court should consider all material which may help it reach a proper conclusion, but the value of some evidence is outweighed by the problems it creates. Balancing the the competing considerations is, within the limits of fairly wide general principles, a matter for the discretion of the judicial officer. And it is therefore to that discre wide discretion, Chairperson, that we appeal uh, in, in what is to follow. Well, you remember the regulations for the Commission, in fact, specifically vest me with the power to exclude evidence even if it is strictly speaking irrelevant if in my opinion it doesn't contribute materially to the that's correct answering of the questions posed for for our answer in the, under the terms of reference that, so, that's correct so that strengthens the point that you made, made from the passage you read uthi umgcinisihlalo ewe umthetho we commission uyayivuma lo nto kuba ubungqina obungaphathelene nalo nto ephandwayo mabungathathwa Thank you, Chairperson, and for, for convenience, and I might as well tend to that point then, because that, that is the point I was going to do. In, indeed, Chairperson, uh, in terms of the regulations regarding the Commission of Inquiry into the tragic incidents of um, on to Marikana and so on, reg Regulation 11, which is the one that the Chairperson was alluding to, reads as follows. And whenever the Commission is satisfied upon evidence or information presented to it that the Commission's inquiry may adversely affect any existing, instituted or pending legal proceedings or any inquiry instituted in terms of any law, Evidence which is relevant to such legal proceedings or inquiry shall be dealt with by the Commission in such a manner as not to affect adversely such legal proceedings or inquiry. That's not the regulation I refer to, because yes. I'm aware of that regulation as well. Yes. And I can understand that regulation also has a bearing on, on the submissions you're going to make. Yeah. 
But yes, the, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, in fact, I was just about to say, in addition to the general discussion that the Chairperson referred to, the, the, this one is also of, of, of relevance. <laughs> Uh, Chairperson, I'm, I'm not going to waste time about the self-evident um, harm which might befall those people who, who may have made uh, self-incriminatory statements. That's, uh, that it goes without saying. Uh, what I want to refer to, Chairperson, before I, I uh, refer back to this, to, 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 to the regulations, is simply that our instructions, and, and we consulted on this very extensively yesterday, are clearly that uh, the, the, the self-incriminatory statements that I've referred to were uh, obtained by the use of, of very graphic torture. Uh, we have... Um, medical evidence uh, in respect of, of some of the individuals uh, concerned who were taken last year after, after their release to, to medical practitioners. Um, I don't want to get into those details. No doubt those issues will feature one day in a trial, within a trial. Can, can I interrupt at this stage and ask you this question? <coughs> you referred to a number of statements which the SAPS have given you copies of in which they on which they intend to rely. Have you had the opportunity to consult with all the persons who allegedly made the statements to which you refer? Uh, not all, Chairperson. I think there's, in terms of the, 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 I've obviously consulted with all the people referred to, but so it, you, I, I assume uh, you're... That's what I meant, yes. Yes. I, 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 well, Chairperson, let me rephrase that. I have requisitioned all the people who have been mentioned in the statements. I have so far... Uh, consulted with about 13 to 15 of them. There are about five of them outstanding. But... Just to make sure that you and I are understanding each other, yeah. I'm referring to people yes. who allegedly made statements upon confessions, as you call them, yes. or possibly incriminating admissions, mm. um, upon which the SAPS have indicated that they propose relying on these statements. All those people, in other words, the... the that category. Although, have you consulted with all of those? As a statement, as a There is only one in that category who is outstanding, Chairperson. Uh, but I've consulted with. Five, five of them, in that special category, yes. Give Mr. Mustang a chance, I'm sorry. Karen. Thank you, Jeff. Just finished. Um, so, so what we're really talking about is six statements, um, which are either confessions or self-incriminatory conf admissions, sure. which you contend are inadmissible because they were extracted improperly. Yes. And which would be... Not, not received in evidence in a criminal trial because of the fact upon which you rely. Um, and five of, the, of the, the, the persons you consulted with, and five of them have alleged to you that the, circum the statements were extracted from them in the circumstances such as you've mentioned. And there's one person outstanding with whom I take it you, you're still hoping to consult. Is that correct? Um... Chairperson, without revealing too much, I would say instead of five, say four, though there's one where there's a grey area. Uh, four of the five uh, have I'm certainly uh, made allocations. Are there six statements. Yes. You've consulted with five of the persons who made the statements. Yeah. Of Four of them positively state that the s statements were extracted from them in circumstances which would render the statements inadmissible. Yeah. There is what you call a grey area in respect to the fifth, yeah. and you're still so endeavouring to That's consult correct. with the sixth. That's, That's correct. Yeah. Um, I don't want you to say something 
in public, which could yes. be embarrassing for the persons, but I'd be grateful if you give me, possibly in writing, uh, during the adjournment, the names of the six yes. people to whom you refer. Uh, I don't think it's advisable to get into the public yes. domain yeah. that these six people allegedly made confessions if, in fact, yes. those confessions aren't admissible. But That's if you can give them to me in writing, and obviously to Mr. Matabedi and Mr. Semenya, that would help. I appreciate that. Ati aganda kunga ba so kugba ba benya nzale do kugba ba zenze as a statement. Uti ngo sika ku. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Yes, in fact, um, if I may remind the Chairperson, the um, some of these people we we referred to along the lines that the Chairperson has, has uh, said last year, shortly after their release, when we were complaining about their torture and so on in 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 broad terms without mentioning their names. Safe, safe to say, Chaperson, that uh, uh, Chaperson will remember that one of those persons had alleged that uh, he, he had been assaulted until he soiled himself. Another one said that uh, his, his eardrums were. were Severely affected. I've not looked at the medicals again. Um, that kind of those kinds of allegations, which are already on the record. record to So that's the 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 the, the kind of. Um, uh, Allegations with Del as I said, Chairperson, I don't want to dwell into those things. They, they might well be fe they feature in trials within a trial in the criminal cases at a later stage. But but just, just broadly, those, those are the kinds of allegations. So we have the Chairperson before before I I, I deal with uh, the factors which which. Uh, might be relevant to the discussion uh, that I've referred to. I just wanted also <clears throat> to specifically deal with what I call relevance in the in the in the stricter sense rather than the wider sense. <clears throat> Namely, this chairperson. In 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 weighing in weighing up the issues. I'd like the chairperson to take into account whether, in fact, the question of assuming the statements were, admit, were um, not even extracted in, in, uh, in, in the manner that I've, I've, I've uh, alluded to, are they, is the, are their contents uh, in respect of self-incrimination and so on? actually relevant to the issues that the the commission has to determine mandibe ke ngolo hlobo kokuba noma xa sithi mhla umbeni thikelelo kokuba zishinyelele endlela ezitayi ngendlela eright apho abantu bazibophisa khona ziphathelene na ezo statement no phando olenziwa yile commission masijonge ngolo hlobo lento and i know that chairperson at face value this submission might, might sound um Strange in the sense that obviously the the commission has to determine what happened during that particular period and so on, and and also the such quote unquote confessions, stroke admissions uh, would be relating to exactly the matters that happened in that in that period. But that is not the sense in which I'm I'm raising this point. I'm raising this point, Chairperson, in the following manner. It is not the, the function of this commission to pinpoint specific uh, criminal li liability on the part of uh, specific individuals. Mr. Mpofe, is that entirely correct? Among the terms of reference, is a request to us to consider suggesting to the Director of Public Prosecutions that prosecutions be considered against particular individuals. That would 
possibly include suggestions in respect of members of the police service if they have behaved in a manner which would constitute a criminal offence. Um, equally, of course, the same point would apply to some of the strikers if the evidence reveals that they may well have committed criminal offences also. So um, I'm not sure you're entirely correct in saying that that's beyond our province. It certainly is a, an aspect we have to consider. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, knowing you, I anticipated that <laughs> that uh, uh, question. The issue, Chairperson, is, is, is as follows. Let's, let's take, for example, uh, I'll answer it indirectly first. One of the reasons, Chairperson, that, for example, we have been told that the shooters, as we call them, uh, are not going to be all called here individually to say, uh, this is why I shot and this is how I shot and so on, is exactly because whatever the, the criminal uh, liability of those shooters is, is a, a matter that is uh, separate from what the Commission is investigating. What the Commission is really investigating principally is whether there is liability on, uh, on the part of groups of people, uh, generically speaking. So when you look at uh, the terms of reference, and I won't read them, You'll see, for example, the Commission shall inquire, make findings, report, and make recommendations concerning the following, taking into consideration the Constitution, and so on. One, the conduct of Lon Min, and then it says, the conduct of Lon Min PLC, not of Mr. Sinclair or Mr. This and that. And then the conduct of AMCU, and then um, the conduct of NUM, and so on and so on. And the two provisions which are not don't fall into that generic category. Which, which, which might be a more direct answer to your uh, question, Chairperson, uh, uh, 1.6, firstly. 1.6 says uh, one of the things that the Commission must um, uh, investigate is the conduct of individuals and loose groupings in fermenting and or otherwise promoting a situation of conflict and front confrontation which may have given rise to the tragic incident uh, directly or indirectly. So it's confined to the, the fermenting of, a, of, of a, a particular atmosphere when it comes to that category. Uh, and then, and then Chaperson, uh, Paragraph 5 of the Terms of Reference, which is the one that the chairperson referred to, says, the Commission shall, where appropriate, refer any matter for prosecution, further investigation, or the convening of a separate inquiry to the appropriate law enforcement agency, government department, or regulator regarding the conduct of a certain person or persons. And the, the, the commission would make a, a referral uh, for, uh, let's say in this, in this context, a, a criminal prosecution. 
and the SS plan of the and Apostle is in Dulu, Sokoba, Magupande, Ikela, no Maumdu, or Tizik, it is a Gumia Ozogans of Pando, Lotuki, Laguno Lak. It does not, firstly, uh, postulate where the Commission itself uh, is, must busy itself with the determination of such criminal liability. I shall go back, find the issue, Kibo Sokoba, Lom, Dunyani, Yani. And secondly, Chair President, and more importantly, in the case of all the individuals uh, who fall into what we've called the special category, criminal proceedings have already been uh, instituted. So paragraph five in respect of those uh, individuals is irrelevant because the, the commission is hardly going to refer them to criminal prosecution when they've already been prosecuted. Now, that, that being so, Chairperson, and 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 um, looking at it from the point of view of of remember where we started, of of the weighing of the prejudice uh, versus property value and so on. So jonga ke pa e kala na abo best jonga si sa ko na yonge into meko ezotlo katukile. It would mean that either at best for for my argument uh, there is no property value of the evidence, or at the very least it it is there but it's tenuous. And weighing that against the substantial uh, prejudice and harm, which is self-evident, uh, which would be uh, suffered by the individuals concerned, then I would appeal for the commission to exercise its discretion in favor of excluding the evidence. So, that, so I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dakota made a point to me which I think I'd like to put to you. And when you give us the names of the people on the piece of paper, which uh, we discussed, not, not desirable to do in a public forum like this, it would be also helpful if you could tell us the, char the charges which have been brought against those particular people. Because um, clearly your point would be that if, if one of them has been charged with the murder of Mr. Tala, for example, um, then we don't have to recommend that that, ha that that should happen because it's happening already. Um, but if, of course, he hasn't been charged with the murder of Mr. Tala and the evidence indicates that there is a strong case against him, then that would be a factor that would not be covered by your argument. So it would be helpful if you could give us then not only the names, but also the charges being, which have already been brought against them, because that would have a bearing on the application of the argument that you, you've just put. Yes, of, of this particular argument, yes, Chairperson. We first have a lot of people who talk about that. I beg our commission to go back. Ah, um, take us on both. Anga baniga ema pepe gubenga abo abasonga uba ongu bani no bani. Oh, okela ngechale logo tuenza ogu no ku. So to round off that point, Chairperson, uh, on, on that leg of the argument, what we are simply submitting is that uh, in the weighing up process, the, the prejudice outweighs even if we concede to some tenuous um, uh, property value, which might or might not be there. No, the, 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 the next point, Chairperson, which um, we would appeal for you to consider is also the, uh, is a very important issue of um, consistency. And I've already alluded to it in the in the context of what I call the shooters. And uh, 
Um, I, I won't repeat it, Chairperson. It's the same point that I raised in respect of the shooters and um, uh, and, 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 and and how the shooters on the other side would would be um, uh, uh, treated in a way. Again, that is a good point. Abba, to bola bana ba chonga ngi pinde. If I can put the point to you, as it appeared to me from the very beginning of this commission to see whether it's the point you're making. The matter of general policy, it wouldn't be advisable for this commission to make positive findings of guilt against particular individuals. Because if, they were, if the prosecution authorities decide not to prosecute them, or if they were, they were prosecuted and acquitted, they would nevertheless bear the, the, the stain, as it were, of a positive finding of guilt by this commission. And that is a, a, a matter of general principle would not be desirable. Yeah, so, that, that's um, it would be, it may well be we could find there's a prima facie case or something of that kind, but positive findings of guilt I do not understand to be within our terms of reference. Th and I can understand very powerful reasons of principle why, the, why we should be, we should refrain from, from doing that. Yes, Th thank you very much, oh, Chairperson. Um, and and as a reference to that awful. particular constraint, uh, Chairperson, you'll remember that uh, even I, uh, at my most accusative um, or, or combative. No, I, I think accusatorial. Is <laughs> accusatorial, yes. Accusative is, is, more, is more of an objective word. It's better, it. yes. Uh, uh, would, have, would have said, Chairperson, for example, uh, with regard to uh, uh, Brigadier Khalid, that we will recommend to the commission that the commission must refer your case to for prosecution. I, the, I could never have said put to him that, uh, well, because of this or that concession that you have made, we're going to now ask this commission to say you you are guilty of, of anything. And, and that was because of that very constraint, Chairperson. Now, the, the, the next point, Chairperson, is, uh, is, is simply the fact that, and this has also been made, this point has been made before, insofar as it's not clear to me, I must confess, how subs in any event were seeking to introduce those so-called confessions through the evidence of Mr. X. But I'm sure that's a matter that which they've thought about. But assuming that the, 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 there was a way to do so, the, the potential prejudice, I, I can't put it higher than that, uh, should also uh, take into account that uh, well, Mr. X is a, a self-confessed uh, multiple murderer himself. And his motives are still going to be revealed, no doubt, in under cross examination. But whatever they are, whatever they are. The extent to which he implicates others uh, in gruesome and 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 uh, uh, you know um, serious crimes, to say the least. And ought itself to be taken from whence it comes. And to, to the extent that he, by his own admission, is a tainted type of witness. Of witness. To that extent, the protection of others who may be innocent, or at least who claim innocence, unlike him. Uh, should, should be taken into consideration. 
The last uh, consideration which we would appeal for the commissioners to take into account in the exercise of the discretion. Enyega into a sozama ubasi kela pa wui commissioner ngubazi chonge sisa ile. Is that in any event, uh, broadly speaking, in our law, pre and post constitutional dispensation, uh, the the right to uh, against self incrimination is uh, one that is always jealously guarded uh, in our system. Ma si chonga umtete we tu pambidi na semba kugwenzi wa gumka kosego lo okona eli kunya lokuba umuntu maga kusego kuba angas bopie nangu kwa ke li kunya eli kore li kusego and without going much into detail because that the content of that right is is quite um, uh, tight it's constitutionally entrenched yes it's constitutionally entrenched uh, and uh, as i said it even existed even before um, that is that the corner the part of the pants with constitution with um, the reason of the pump of by the constitution belly dog will call i'll simply want to refer you to page 582 of uh and here page 582 where it deals okay. simply with the question of the scope and applicability of of the right as follows as we mentioned above our courts have accepted that the privilege is not limited to criminal or civil civil proceedings it is available, for instance, to a person called as a witness in inquest proceedings. And it seems in administrative and quasi-judicial hearings. The simple point being that the the uh, right against self-incrimination uh, would be applicable in proceedings such as this one. Um, yes, Chairperson, I think those, are, those, those would be the, the, the specific considerations uh, which we would highlight. The list is not exhaustive. Uh, as to the the exercise of the discretion that we we seek to be to the pelera apa gem te gazu na manga go ben tandu bandi wa veza no mandinga veza nga yonge yonge into kota ndi opelela so all in all cha person the ruling we seek is is um for the exclusion telo se to go ba bunga fa kwa of statements pertaining the statement uh, which are a self-incriminatory and or pertaining yeah. to persons who claim uh, that no, B, 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 A yes, self-incriminatory yes, yes. or B, uh, uh, and, or and, B or, and or B and or B yes. And this is the reason being a book, but we got to have a statement Finish pertaining to. Yes, sorry, Chief. now I've lost my sentence, which I, <laughs> I had just crafted. Pertaining to, to persons who um, claim that such statements were improperly obtained. I'm, I'm just giving it in a generic kind of feel. Um, uh, maybe I might, I might add to a person to just uh, the, the, that's the that's the order. I, I just something that I forgot to mention. Improperly obtained, you mean, in circumstances which would render them inadmissible in the court of law? Uh, exactly, to person. In circumstances where the, they would prima facie be inadmissible. Obviously, we don't have the facility of a trial within a trial in these proceedings. So one can postulate. Ma, is statement the Ogno Wenze, Coco Bata, Seguiwa, a court, opposing Genza Bazingam Geleki court. What exactly do you mean by exclusion? Okay. Um, the reason I ask the question is 
we've received some bundles from the police, which include dockets. Now, these dockets include all sorts of statements, including the statements to which you refer, um, in, now, and all sorts of other statements as well. Now, do you submit that the exclusionary order you seek should be wide enough to, to involve the removal of statements of that kind from the dockets that are before us? Yes, yes, Chaperson. Uh, and, and, and one of the reasons for that, Chaperson, is that is a point which well, I did. Don't let me get that done. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, Chief. <laughs> Yes, Chair yes. I just wanted to make a, a... I take it this order is made in relation to the six people on whose behalf you... whose names you're going to give to us in writing. That's correct, Chair but but uh, I, I might just mention... That's why I use the word statements instead of the persons, because some of the persons might have made one or more statements. Yes, no, 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 no. Yes. Uh, all statements made yes, by the, those the, all, the six persons to whom we refer... That's correct, Chair ...allege, or in the case of the sixth, or possibly even... The, the fifth alleged that the statements were obtained in circumstances which would render them inadmissible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 just two quick points. One is that the, 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 the dockets concerned, or rather the statements concerned, were obviously obtained for, for the purposes of different uh, proceedings to, to the current ones. Manditi as a statement, because I will allow my docket, I will allow my commission. And as the chairperson has correctly alluded, their admiss admissibility or otherwise uh, will probably be determined in those proceedings. The, the next point which may be of relevance is the fact that, uh, at least in the case of, I think, two of the individuals, they indicated that they, they, they had wanted the presence of ourselves as their legal representatives, which was denied. Um, again, I'm just mentioning, mentioning that blandly, Chairperson. It's a matter that will be dealt with at, at the appropriate time. Let me, let me make sure I understand you. Um, this, this sounds like a second alternative ground of admissibility. Either the statements are extracted by, by force or the threat of force. Or even if there wasn't an actual, there wasn't actual force or actual threat of force, the taking of the statement in the circumstances was was inappropriate and therefore inadmissible, because the right to legal representation, which was requested, was not uh, accorded to the, sta the the person who made the statement before the statement was made, and that you would contend, in the alternative, as it were. Uh, was in any event would be a basis for excluding the statements That's in a correct. trial, and ergo, you say, they should be about the basis for the exclusion of the statements here. Is that That's, is that that's that exactly what? correct, Chairperson. That's why I use the, the word generically improperly, but it would encompass those two examples. <laughs> <to be most laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Those are the submissions. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, who is going to reply on behalf of the SAPS? But perhaps I should also state that I am proposing to ask the evidence leaders as well, but I think after we've had a reply from the SAPS, it's, I was proposing to take the, the, the adjournment about this stage. Um, if you prefer to argue after the adjournment, uh, I'll let you do that. If you'd like to argue now, I'm in your hands.
it, 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 it would be convenient to do it, otherwise it's going to be an argument that is uh, interrupted by the adjournment. Right, thank you. Very very well. Well. The adjournment for 15 minutes. Is our target special at 15 minutes? Near Kunjuzo, go me, meaning a hambi, was a go pume e commissioners.
Daar nie praat net so, het ons net kyk, is daar enige echo's? Ok. Ja, is, 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 is daar by my? Is by my, ja. No echo's, right? Dan ik hem weer echt hoor. Ik hoor nog glad niet van jou niet. Glad niet. Hang net aan. Danny, praat weer. Danny. Testing, testing, two. Two, two, two. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Two, 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 two. Uh, he doesn't look like he's getting anything.
Commission resumes, but Sugum. Singer Talango. Commission resumes the. I apologise once again for the delay, which was caused apparently by attempts to get the audio system working. I'm assured it is now working. We, we will see. Before Mr. Semenya addresses me, I wish to make uh, two announcements. After, after Mr. X has finished his evidence in chief, um, the evidence of the experts, Mr. White, and, and, I, and I think Colonel Hendricks will be interposed. Those who wish to apply for permission to cross-examine uh, Mr. White and Colonel Hendricks must please do so uh, by the end of business on Friday, that's about four o'clock or what was four on Friday. In the case, Friday. Indicating the topics on which they wish to cross-examine, the documents on which they propose to rely if, if they are given permission. Those who have wish to apply or have applied for, cross, to, for leave to cross-examine Mr. X have not yet provided list of the documents on which they wish to rely. Ah, please Funa. do so by the start of business on Monday. Please do so by the start to this application. And they are brief. Uh, and and the first chair is that this is again an anticipatory objection. We are not given the names of people about whose statements there should be difficulties. There are no statements of any of them who are alleging that the statements obtained from them were obtained under circumstances 
that would render them inadmissible in law. Well, ah, to be fair, are. I take it if, if um, they haven't yet provided the names of the persons, it's, they can't also provide statements from those persons whom they haven't yet named. But I take it the point you're making is that in order to deal adequately with the objection, you really need the information that I asked for, which we will be getting in due course, um, together with statements from those persons indicating, prima facie at least, that there is a reason to believe that an objection to the admissibility of the evidence would be upheld at the trial, and therefore the consequent prejudice which, to which Mr. Mpofu has referred would be suffered if the evidence were, were admitted here. I, I take it that's what you're saying. Am, am I right? That, that, that is correct, Chair. That's why we call it an anticipatory objection. This objection, if it has merit, it must be raised at a point where the admissibility of a particular statement is objected to. We would know the contents of that statement. We would know exactly under which circumstances it is alleged a statement was obtained under coercion or on one or other ground which would render that document inadmissible. But so too, the way in which one meets that type of objection... Is, is this your second answer? You yes, I'm you still on the same so point. So the first point. It's a good yes. And hopefully still brief. Brevity is a relative concept. So Mpofu would have made me a witch. Chair. <laughs> chair, secondly, the way one deals with an objection of that nature is to obtain the specificity of the complaint in that statement where they say, I have been coerced by Sergeant X. And, and, that, and that would give us an opportunity to go and consult with that individual against whom that allegation is made. It is when you compare the two that you would see whether or not the complaint is sound or not sound, the objection is valid or is not valid. So as a matter of principle, you cannot invite a ruling of the commission that unidentified statements by a statement as in Gavazuanga. Allegedly made on a basis that renders them in law inadmissible, as in which is just purely offered at the bar. That is the first one, Chair. <clears throat> the second one, Chair, is that. This objection confuses the nature of the forum this is. There is absolutely no jurisdiction on this commission to convict anyone. You do not have those powers. The terms of reference tell us that your function is to investigate. It's investigative. So even to use the word like self-incriminating, it's misplaced, it's a misnomer. You cannot incriminate yourself in a commission. But why I do know that to be accurate, Chair, is I is with reference to the provisions of the regulations themselves. And, and that's regulation nine two. Which reads as as follows. No evidence regarding questions and answers contemplated in sub-regulation 1 and no evidence regarding any fact or information that comes to light in consequence of any such questions or answers shall be in any criminal proceedings. Now that's where the complaint is. Uko, 
eza uvela apa eza usechenji za kumanjana kasa kucholo abandu ele enga vela apa kule komishin it says that fact or information shall be admissible in any criminal proceedings that's that, that's what it says Except in criminal proceedings where the person consents is charged with an offence in terms of Section 6 of the Commission's Act, i.e., he perjured himself. So the regulations anticipated so that to free the hand of the Commission to investigate the facts. Exclude that information that says before the Commission in subsequent criminal proceedings. But, but two chairs. At the very highest level of powers the commission has is to make a recommendation. Amanda Anikwe Commission Lena Amakulo Kokba Yenzenje is in Dululo. And if the commission was minded to make a recommendation about the prosecution of any individual. It would surely be on the basis of a reasoned recommendation. And if that reason is cogent in the eyes of the National Director of Public Prosecutions, then maybe that may result. That, that is the very highest that can come out of here if there is evidence cogent enough to support the conclusion or the recommendation. The third, which is one tangential to the second, but also supportive of the second, is to consider the probative value of the evidence that is sought to be tendered. It may very well be that come argument we would be asking the commission to say please accept that statement insofar as it is supported by independent cogent evidence. And it may very well be that Mr. Bofu might argue that absent a particular corroboration of the contents of that statement, that statement has no property value. And my understanding is that the statements are to be proffered to the Commission on the basis that they corroborate what Mr. X says. Mr. X is an accomplice, Mr. X is a self-confessed criminal, there's a, a certain degree of suspicion which attaches to anything he may say, doesn't mean he's necessarily telling the truth, but it means particular caution is required. And if you approach his evidence as an accomplice, you then very often look either for corroboration or some other factor which renders his evidence cogent. Now, the argument will be not that you look at the statement tended to corroborate X, to see whether there's something else that, corro that corroborates it. That, that, that's rather a contrived operation. Um, if the, if the conf so-called confession or alleged confession of, say, Mr. Y um, is corroborated by some factor, that presumably will be a factor which will in any event corroborate the evidence of Mr. X. In support of his evidence, the, the alleged confession of Mr. Y is produced. So I'm uh, quite sure how this submission of yours works. Because remember, we're not looking at a statement by a alleged statement by Mr. Y to see that whether we can believe it on its own, as I understand it. The purpose for which these statements are to be produced, if I'm understanding this, this part of the case correctly, is we're looking for material which can give us the assurance that what Mr. X says on a particular issue can be believed, despite the problems that I've alluded to. Now, if there's something else anyway which corroborates what Y says 
which, which in turn corroborates what X says, and you can just look at the at, at the factor relied on in, to corroborate what Y says for the purpose of corroborating X. So uh, it seems a little bit um, contrived to approach it in the way you, you, you are, but I'm putting the problem to you because I'm not quite sure I understand the full thrust of your submission. Umchagazum can tell you better on a lot of Umchagazus, many of and the one I didn't tell you better than I. Would you umpof all Mr. X was our tether into as teaser or Bubunena? Anything about Mabung and Gaini. Cabun and Nalan and Nalendo et and the Mr. X. Abuna Jong as your Bobo to find a beggar in Megonoma, Chambe, Obunia, Obun and Obaham Bell and the Pamgo Bong as a Goba, I Jong and Solent. Well, Chair, maybe let me illustrate this with an example. If the statement of a particular witness says, for instance, I was one of the Makarapas, because in itself may make him an accomplice, we may have to approach his evidence with caution. Its property value is significantly heightened if we can see him on the video. And at that time of argument, I'll be able to say to the Commission Chair, you must accept him to be correct on the not only on the strength of what is contained in the statement, but it is independently corroborated by objective evidence. That is the submission that I'm making. And, but it, it is something that can be ruled upon now because you just don't have the substratum on which to base any ruling. And, and finally, I repeat the, the second submission. We should not conflate the nature of these proceedings to court proceedings that are determinative of rights. This one is not. And, and I did not quite understand the argument about relevance. Because those Sorry, statements... the argument was that relevance, as appeared in the passage in Zephyr, Professor Zephyr's book, was that relevance in the legal context, in the context of evidence, has got two facets. The one is whether it's relevant to the issue. The other is it may be technically relevant to the issue, but if its reception involves so many other problems of lengthy investigation of collateral facts and so on, then as a matter of legal policy, the, the law of evidence says, or the courts that have developed the principles of law of evidence, say that this evidence isn't worth the candle. It may be technically relevant, but it's not, quote, legally relevant, that's the phraseology used, because of all the attendant mischiefs and nonsense and trouble in arriving at proof of a fact which may not contribute substantially to the issue. I, I think that was Mr. S um, Porfu's submission, if I understood him correctly. If I didn't, he will with his usual forthrightness. Tell me I'm wrong. And, and, and that is why we are making the argument. That is why we make the argument that that legal proposition is sound if you are confronting a forum which has the, the, the power to adjudicate rights that are in contestation, whether it's the right to innocence or whether it is a right to, to judgment in a civil uh, a matter, it's a different issue. But this forum does not have those powers. So that the, the so-called prejudice or harm to which Mr. Mpofu refers is not manifest. It's not even palpable. It's not even demonstrable. We are not even told who would suffer what harm and, and, and be able to then make a ruling whether or not there is cogency 
in that type of submission. We are not there yet. <laughs> So we are being asked to reply blind to the government of the complaint because we have no details of it. And those are our submissions, Chair. I'm not sure that the complaint is blind, but I, I would hope that any blindness that may exist will be eliminated when Mr. Mpofu gives us the list to which I referred. Yeah, I can't see a problem in the provision of statements, affidavits by the persons concerned, uh, indicating grounds prima facie why the statements would be inadmissible. Um, if Mr. Pufu does that, then we would have a basis. You, then you would be able to deal with the allegations, as you say. Um, we would have a basis for saying this evidence is suspect, we better not receive it. Um, but when you talk about prejudice, of course there's a further factor which I must confess weighs with me and I'd like to hear you on. It's not only prejudice to people, it's prejudice to the Commission, it's prejudice to the credibility of its findings. I wouldn't want the impression to be created that this commission is prepared to function as a kind of star chamber, receiving all kind of suspect evidence extorted by torture, if that's the case. I, mean, I, I obviously don't know that is so, but, um, and making findings on it. That would not be conducive to achieving the purposes which the commission was appointed, to give an objective, unbiased finding of what the facts in dispute are. The Star Chamber was rightly closed during the reign of King Charles I because of all the abuses to which it gave rise. And I have ne never have ed had, had any ambition to preside over a revived body of that kind. And I think there are very strong, cogent reasons why that should not be the case. And if evidence is going to be put before us, which is suspect, suspect not because it's definitely proven to have been extracted by torture, but it's got the taint of, or it's, I would say, a prima facie taint of, of that kind of problem, alleged problem. And then the further point Mr. Mpofu raises would pick up traction, as it were, and that is the time to be spent investigating these allegations would probably not be worth the candle because uh, we've got limited time here um, and for the very reasons why it would operate in, in a court. I understand we're not a court. I understand we, we have no rights to determine anything. But we are, com are re required to give recommendations and findings which is believed will be of assistance not only in particular disputes between some of these people and the police or lawmen, but which will, it is hoped, will assist to give guidance generally in, in what amounts to a national problem which has actually given rise to international concern. And we must do nothing which would in any way imperil the credibility of the Commission. As you will know, I've leant over backwards. Some people have criticised me for leaning over too, backwards too much, but I've, I had to choose between doing things which might give rise to complaints against the Commission on the ground that it wasn't being fair, as opposed to complaints on the other side that I was being too fair. But um, Those are, were valid considerations. They remain valid considerations. And they are, to me, the most important factors to, to be considered in assessing this uh, point that's been raised by Mr. Mpofu. But it, I would like to respond to you this way by asking Mr. Mpofu a question. Mr. Mpofu, you are going to give me the list of the six people. I take it you won't have a problem giving me affidavits from them indicating the basis upon which they allege their statements were, would be ruled inadmissible in a court of law, why it would be improper for even a commission of this kind, upholding principles of fairness, concerned to be seen to retain its, its credibility. If, if you set those facts out, then there will be a basis for me to exercise the discretion if necessary, and also, I suppose, an answer 
uh, a basis for the police if they can show that the allegations are clearly without any merit at all, wh wh why that's a matter that can be looked at. I understand you to say, in the case of some at least of the people, you've actually got medical reports indicating these people were assaulted while they were in custody, which would, if that is so, would afford some kind of prima facie confirmation of the allegations. Am I correct in that? Uh, yes, Chairperson, we do. So what I propose to do is not to make a ruling on the on the objection that you've raised until we, that material is available and the police have had a chance to deal with it. It does seem to me to be fair to say that it's difficult for the SAPS to deal with a generalised attack, um, but you, it's within your power, and you've indicated to me, and I understand you're prepared to, to exercise that power. It's within your power to give them the wherewithal so these become specific points relating to statements made or allegedly made by six specific people, and we can then deal with it in a in a, in a comprehensive and, and uh, what one hopes satisfactory basis. Uh, Chairperson, yes. Well, in principle, I have no objection to that, Chairperson. It's just unfortunate because it would be time consuming. I would have thought that Mr. Semenya, as a colleague, would accept uh, from the bar. When I say I've consulted with people yesterday, and they are medical, we sent them to medical for a medical examination last year, and that some of the allegations had, have already been made on the record. But uh, if, 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 if that is not uh, acceptable to him, then obviously I'll get the people to repeat what they said to me yesterday in the consultations. It, well, it's not only Mr. Semenya's uh, it's, it's feelings of the matter or views of the matter relevant, it's ours as well. I'm reluctant to do this rule inadmissible statements just on, on say so, even though it comes from counsel, I understand counsel do their duty, they convey their instructions to the court or the commission, but uh, uh, I wanted something a bit more than that. Anyway, I, I would like that done. I will not give a ruling just yet. Um, when the, this material is referred to has come, Mr. Semenya will then be able to deal with it if he wishes. He and may fun. well feel at that stage, so I'll give Mr. Mishanko a chance for a moment, he may feel at that stage that, in fact, what will be, what will be necessary will be quite far-ranging investigations into alia by the Commission, which may render the whole exercise not worth the candle. But that's something for him to decide in the light of the material when it becomes available. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Mr. Butlinder, um, is there anything you wish to say at this stage, or would you wish to keep your powder dry and use it if necessary after the information Mr. Mpofu has undertaken to give us is available and Mr. Semenya has had a chance to deal with it? We have if there will be an opportunity to address you at that stage, I'm happy to wait until that stage. I, I will give you that opportunity. Before you say something, can I just say something? I take it it's implicit that the statements that the police may wish to rely on will not be proffered until such time as this matter is disposed of. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, maybe, Chairperson, uh, uh, what I can say, which, which may or may not uh, be of assistance, is that um, some of the people, at least, I'm, I'm not sure of the number now, uh, have about six, I'm told, uh, but uh, uh, I don't want to be held to that number. You did tell me it was six. You said yeah, you no, no. four of them. There's one, one you've, you've actually consulted five of them. Now, four making a different point. A different point, sorry. Yeah. Some of those six, Chairperson, um, some or all, as I say, I just didn't want to commit because I'm not sure of the number. Some or all of them have, in any event, laid 
charges or complaints with IPID. And this also is something that I, I think I indicated last year uh, regarding uh, their alleged torture. And I, I'll allow... If you drop that, solve the problem. If you can get, get, get the dockets from IPID, then uh, that, 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 that may save you quite a lot of other, other yes, work. Yeah. Yes, uh, no, that's what I'm saying, Chairperson. And uh, I, I don't want to discourage this this um, break in the proceedings, but just to say this, Chairperson, there's only one method to test the admissibility of a statement, and it's called a trial within a trial. We don't have that facility in these proceedings, and so whatever we do will have to be a compromise or um, some kind of uh, uh, improvisation. I don't because know you say, oh, sorry to interrupt you, I'm not sorry. Sure. you say we haven't got that facility, we have the power to make rules for our procedure. And if, well, it, if it was necessary, we would do that. The other point you raise, of course, is that the, the inconvenience of embarking upon a, on a series of six trials in a trial <laughs> may outweigh any advantage that may arise from producing the statements at the end, if at the end of such an inquiry or series of inquiries, there was a finding in favour of the police, but that's that's the other point you make. Which yes, thank you. I haven't overlooked. Any interviews on the case on both from Gogo Gogba, Abba any no ma bonke Abba and the bus standard to attend a bopai Benza is statement by Fula Amajala we independent police investigators that came direct from Gogo Bay to Agwabo. Ogunga ba gumne na Abba Ogo ba Abba bantu ni ane bonza kadi so pam Gogo ba ba vese as is dead of two of us if there's Abba. Bogo get tagus, I will under um teto or so gender girl tatali take a shakuba, babuz or emi buzz or band of manuba and by teta inyanza can dig as better the clash. Chair uh I must say to Mr Mpofu that I, I don't doubt his integrity. It is it is not that he was not told about these tortures. But torture coercions are questions of fact. That, that must come from those who allege it and the circumstances around which they contend or allege that torture happened. So it is that second category to which I'm, I was making reference. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't understand you to be questioning Mr. Buffer's integrity at all. But anyway, he's very fairly conceded to give you the information. It may be that it comes from the hyperdockets if we can get them. So, and if that's so, if we can get them sooner rather than later, we can deal with this matter quite soon. But secondly, Chair, the secondly, we will answer that when we have the information. But secondly, the prejudice to the Commission can only arise if it makes its conclusions based on that type of evidence around which there is concern. But if, if, if at the conclusion of the Commission, the, the Commission says, because we were not You mustn't make these submissions so strongly, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I, th I thought it was definitely cogent an argument to make. <laughs> not sure. If, if the commission came to the conclusion that because the testing of the truthfulness or otherwise of this allegation is a facility we did not have. It is for that reason we, the weight we attach to these documents is more or less not there unless it is independently corroborated by independent evidence. What could be the prejudice to the Commission if that happens? But it is only at that time that that, 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 that may raise itself as a, as a problem. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
are claims of impropriety of whatever type, whether it's the torture or the absence of legal representative. Now, those claims are there, and uh, I understand Mr. Smeya to accept that those claims were made, at least to me. Now, as to the veracity of the, the claims themselves, that's irrelevant to, what I'm, uh, to the objection I'm raising now, because the veracity or otherwise of those claims can only be determined by uh, a, a trial within a trial. Let's assume that some of them are wild claims and some are true. So what? The whole point is that is, is whether the, the, the commission is uh, prepared against relevance which is either non-existent or tenuous to accept statements in respect of which claims of impropriety have been made. There's no other remedy. Well, I can come with, to Mr. Smenya with a hundred affidavits of people who claim that they were tortured. How is he going to uh, determine the veracity thereof except through the time-tested method of a trial within a trial? There's no other acceptable means of doing that. So it is either the, 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 the commission accepts that these statements, firstly, are not relevant at all, in which case all this is, is, it becomes academic. Or if, if the commission says, well, there might be of some relevance, does the, all this, including this affidavit and so on, justify, um, uh, or, or rather not justify the exercise of the discretion for their exclusion? That's really, that's my submission. So it's not so much I'm going to show somebody's scar and this, that, that's irrelevant at this stage because it's not going to assist anybody. Oh, uh, you uh, 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 your submission to me as you summarize it, but I did say, speaking for myself, I would prefer to see affidavits by the people concerned. So these are not just allegations made, but these are supported by, in the way, f factual assertions in, in, in courts and other bodies normally are, are supported. But anyway, I think we've, we, we understand what you've said, and I think Mr. Semenya understands what you've said, and we understand what he submitted, and you understand it as well. So we can now get on with the main business of the morning, and that's hearing Mr. X's evidence. Cross-examination to do so uh, at the start of business on Monday, and that may make it necessary for you, um, after the evidence of the experts has been interposed, to um, reopen, as it were, the examination in chief of the witness before cross-examination. In which case, you will refer to the documents to which your attention will have been drawn by the parties, and you will also then, I would think, be able to deal with these documents to which Mr. Mpofu has been objecting, because that would be, be the appropriate time to deal with, because I, I would hope by then be able to give the ruling based on the extra information we get again. So uh, we, I take it you can proceed for the moment without referring to those documents, but it's only six people, uh, apparently. Um, and uh, perhaps we can ask Mr. Mpofu at least to provide you with their name um, during the lunch hour, so you at least bear that in mind when you're leading the evidence. But of course your right to proffer those statements uh, at a later stage will of course be reserved subject to the decision that I will have to make. But are you ready to call Mr. X? Thanks Chair. Um, for, for for time, Chair if if we start with the matters of house, housekeeping and name the yes, right. statements of, of Mr. X, but, but it's bundle B. Is the as it is for no buzz long is a pam go back that I'm taking a bone of me and I'm X. In the index of bundle B, documents to be used in evidence in chief of Mr. X. That's correct. And <clears throat> the first two are uh, um, the one is a manuscript statement of Mr. X, date of the 7th of February 2013, and then number two is a type version of that document. And then you have <clears throat> other statements by um, Mr. X, which are described as, as, as new exhibits. 
that's f um, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, it goes up to item 10, Chair. Where we have a manuscript version as well as a type version. So, so quadruple A point one. Quadruple A. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, quadruple A 1.1 .1 will be the manuscript statement dated 7 February 2013. Triple A, sorry, quadruple A 1.2 will be the typed version thereof. Statements are as palanga sanda. SSB in his say so as Palin is under opposite by the Quadruple A 2.1 will be the statement which is um, marked A double four in the docket of case 107 stroke 08 stroke 2012. Is that right? Kubeko SSB in it as a Vedap higher with Dokati. So is is A45 a type version? I haven't looked at it. Or is it a separate? All right, so it'll just be triple A, uh, it'd be rather quadruple A two. That's the statement of X marked A four four in docket CAS one oh seven oh eight twenty two. And then quadruple A three will be the statement of X in same locket. So as the Tetrang as up as CBS has seen and go with the statement as in the way then daughter. Um, check as X with docket as or to give. And then trip, triple A, sorry, I always call triple quadruple A four will be the statement of X marked A seventeen. In docket CAS 109 stroke 08 stroke 12. Um, and um, the next one is uh, uh, in uh, docket CAS 107 stroke 2012. Then, then um, quadruple A six will be the statement marked A thirty-four. A thirty-four, because of us, the statement is a standard. One one one. See, can answer your essence. We're good. Okay, the linear line. And quadruple A seven. Same docket <coughs> marked A thirty five. Cool oil or docket, open the ones I see in statements as can um, Tegas loan and Sega. Item ten, we only have a typed statement. All right, thank you. So, quarter land a liar eight and Bagoko statement. Quest as Pozo says Palamo machine. Um, do we know the date of the that statement? Unfortunately, the chair does not have. Uh, all right, all right. I've a described date the type statement yes. um, number ten in <coughs> um, bundle B. We bundle S B. Thanks, chair. The statement has shown me as in an I O E date. S N Z W A U M T E G A Z U X. 
chairperson, if I may, chairperson, I know it's not in my, uh, my place, but maybe it will save us time and some ink. Would, would it be harmful if we just call it AB1? This quadruple A is just going to. Done already, but perhaps we must bear your suggestion in mind for future exhibits. No, Ms. Pillay agrees with me. Well, perhaps she will also agree with my proposal that we, we, we bear your in, point in mind for future exhibits. I've already gone through the exercise. It's a, it's a good suggestion. It's a pity you didn't mention it earlier, but I a, 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 a thank you for it. Related to the, the gift is. Thanks, Chair. I beg leave to call Mr. X. We won't mention his name. As no uh, it's available on the documents which are before us. Uh, Mr. Nicole, Interpreter, Abagut. would you please, I understand he's, he speaks closer, would you please swear him in? Um, we are fungo by Unke in debt or Ozawi, Nigaza Gule Commission, is a way Yaniso, Yaniso Yonke, Yanse Pele. Yes, I want to take the oath. Agunja Loge Isho Lamazo Alan de Layo, it is Tico, denied. Tico, denied. Yes, son, so help me God. I, Fred, I was. Distracted. Did you tell him he must tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I did exactly that. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Matabini. Thanks. So you confirm that you took part in the strike that occurred during August 2012? We are strike The data again. Sorry. I, I didn't hear um, the witness respond to the request that he be, uh, that he tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Well, Mr. And I don't said believe he that he's properly f sworn in. He was told to do that, but he didn't say, I accept and agree that that would be you the case. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is when, when, when you're told, you're asked to swear you give the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, you then asked to raise your hand, right hand and say, I swear so help me God. And I understood from the interpreter that that's what happened. No, Chair, that's it. precisely my objection. He did not do that. We're having a conflict of fact here, Mr. Stanko, how do you respond to that point? Chairperson, he said it in Kosa. I think the people who understand Kosa understand it. Uh, yes, it is so. And then I said, if it be so, then repeat the following words. So, help me God. And it I can say that the objection, that, that answer doesn't assist us. The raising of the right hand in Kosa or in English is the same thing, Chairperson. He didn't raise his hand. Uh, let's solve the problem by asking him to swear again. Um, if I don't have any, any fancy points, good or bad, taken later, would you ask him, please, to repeat the oath he took, to raise his right hand and One say... And, and Which to repeat that he swears to tell the truth the whole truth would he please raise his right hand and say I swear I see his right hand on the screen the screen the hand is raised Mr. Chairperson let him say I swear so help me God so help me God Tico denied so help me God so you're content Yes, Mr. Motobedi, after that, uh, uh, Thanks, Chair. a possibly overcautious uh, uh, action, let's proceed. Thanks. Sir, so you confirm that you took part in the strike that occurred during August 2012? Yes, sir. Were you aware that the strike was unprotected? <laughs> Yes, sir. Were you not worried that you will lose your job by taking part in the unprotected strike? I didn't go to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
I wasn't scared. Now, sir, you are aware that as a result of the unlawful activities of some of the strikers, uh, that be, be, oh, between the 10th and the 14th of August, Mr. Interpreter. Sentences. Uh, in, sentences incomplete to be interpreted. In I, I thought maybe it's, it's better if I break it into portions. Two portions. You could repeat it again, sir. You are, you are aware that as a result of the unlawful activities of some of the strikers uh, that occurred, uh, sorry, that between the 10th and the 14th of August 2012. <laughs> 10 people lost their lives. Yes, eh? There was destruction of property. Yes. There was intimidation. Sure, I, I don't want to be difficult, but is this really a proper way to ask a question of a witness? It's conclusory as to what happened, uh, rather than evidence of, of what happened. And it's more, what is more put in the most leading way imaginable. It does sound as if you're leading, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I would prefer if you, if you reformulated the question. Ah, but then I would Sorry, sorry, Mr. Butler, most of the points he dealt with are common cause, aren't they? So, I take it it's a short, a short way of trying to get into the meat of the matter. Well, Chair, there's, there's, there's a dispute as to what the cause was of the loss of some of the lives on the 13th of August, for example. Uh, we all may have our views as to who is responsible. But we may all have our views as to who is responsible for what. But the, the assertion seems to me a, a very blank one, which a witness might wish to make, but which wouldn't be put to him. That, 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 the, that the strikers were responsible for all of the deaths that took place on the 13th of August is a matter on which opinions may be. I will replace that because there which we will have to decide the end and make findings on as to whether the deaths of the police on the 13th were caused by unlawful acts by the strikers or are the strikers acting in self-defense or punitive self-defense because they thought that they were themselves under attack. It's a matter which we, which we haven't yet made a finding and we'll only do so at the end. And if I may say so, Chair, the deaths of the strikers on that day, whether that was caused by their unlawful conduct or caused by other people's unlawful yes, conduct. Yes, that, that, that point is also... Anyway, you said you reformulate the question. Sir, were you involved in some of the killings that took uh, place between the 10th and the 14th of August 2012? Yes. Were you involved in some of the destruction of the property that occurred between the 10th and the 14th of August? Yes. Were you involved in some of the intimidation that occurred between the 10th and the 12th of August 2012? Yes, sir. Are you responsible for some of the injuries that uh, people sustained between the 10th and the 14th of August? Yes, sir. I want to urge people who are sitting in the chamber to This is not a matter. This is not a matter for people to make 
Ma singa teki no ma senze o kuna. Ma sima mele indo serious greater desires te tanga. I'm sure they have their feelings about them, but they must please keep them to themselves. Ma sige si yake kuba se zivaganja ni miwaito. Si tulenge si tito sima. I don't want to have to clear the chamber or ask people to leave because they are making a noise. They entitled to be here. They entitled to hear. Mo te umkeni saloni ne kunya. Hadele logba ni be kona apa. Nilbone nelingaina agafuni kutekfike apo azonyanzele koko kwa kukwa abanda batiza wa kuchwa. Anibone kwa kuza ulibane stingo so kwa ndi ipi ndele ndeto. Thanks. Sir, you are aware that losing a loved one is not something that people take lightly. It has got a serious impact on the affected families. Tia tembo kukba unalulazo kukba ukulatlega la mundu osi standa ni sako indo evisa uplungu kita ya thala bentizuwe ni kuru. Kunjana? Kunjana, Tati. It is so. And you are also aware of the consequences of people losing their valuable properties? Uyazi keno latlega kolo mpata ya bando kukba imbangela ya logo indoni. Yes, sir. And you are also aware of the consequences of people having sustained injuries. Na bandu abonza kile nje wia zokokuba bazifa kanga. Kunjalo? It is so. Sir, you agree that it is very important that the affected families should know how and why their loved ones lost their lives. Goku kesi ya tembo goku ba uyafuno ba aba bala tegelwa zizi la mani nezitobo eze nza gala neza sedega kwa kutu kwa kuteni kutewe nza gelondo. Yes, you. You are aware, sir, that you are expected to honestly, openly and truthfully testify before this commission and to answer relevant questions. Unalo, uluazi lo goku ba apa u... Mele ukogba utete inyani, ufule inkizu ya kutete yongi ndo ya zi yonga lendo. It is so. Sir, during August 2012, did you attend any meeting where the plight of the RDOs was discussed? Kwenyanga ka August kulo onyaka ka 2012, kuko i meeting intangansu wa oye guyo apokwe guyo teta kona gezi ndo ezipatelene ne rock drill operators the RDOs. Yes, there was. Where did the meeting take place? Yabanjo, a P-Law meeting. The first one was held in the region of Mwai Mwai as RDOs. There were 700 of us. When was the meeting held? Kwaguni ni Kagubanjo, a law meeting. It was uh, during the, the day. Can you remember the day, the date we are when the meeting was held? You mean, were we, Mpla? Were we five or six? Five, number six. It was the fifth or the sixth, that is the date. Which month was that? Inyanga, Gwagun AP. It was during August. What was discussed at that meeting? Sakumulinde to air vela apo kulo on lands. It was about money that we as RTOs had to receive and that we were going to meet again on the on the 9th. The money we were going to demand was an amount of 12,500. The money was to be demanded from whom? We agreed that we would meet on the 9th of the month, which was a holiday. You haven't answered the question. You were asked 
from whom was the money going to be demanded? From the employer at the time of us. The demand related to what, sir, the, of the 12,500? It was money where our salaries had to be erased because of the uh, hard work that we were doing. How was the meeting conducted? Was there any person who chaired the meeting? meeting. There was a chairperson of the meeting, yes. Who was the chairperson of the meeting? It was Ben. Bele. Bele. Bele, Mr. spelled B E L E. I'm sorry, in cause of B H E L E. there's an H missing. Thanks. How did it come about that Bele should be the chairperson of the meeting? Zaganja Nikoko by meeting Lena is the Banja Ubangu Bele on Umtalinga Pambi. Where can you see it? He was uh, elected by us. During that meeting, was any view expressed about the involvement or non-involvement of unions in pursuing the grievance of the strikers? Ngoku kwe kwe si skalazo na sina na nina so esi patelene ne mifuzole. Nguko indo ya vela apo ogo tatu angayongo banda wanya kwe 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 unions apo. Saati ni butu asifu ni goba aizifulisi skalazo zetu. We said we did not want the unions because they did not uh, forward our grievances. Which union were the strikers referring to? The NAM. How did the meeting end, sir? Yeah, the ending was that uh, we would discuss this amongst ourselves as workers at the different working place and that a meeting would be held at Vonor Cop on the 9th, which would have been a holiday. Now, what was going to be discussed on the 9th at Vonor Cop? Paya at Vonor Cop again, we're going to talk about the 12,500. On the 8th of August, did you go to work, sir? On the 8th of August, why are you in Bangladesh? Yes. Yes. Did anything happen whilst you were on duty? Who in the end of the day, I am 17. Yes. Yes. Will you proceed and tell us what happened, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I went on to clock for duty, there was a parade there. And when I asked what it was about, I was told to go to the parade at the H HR. Sir, what, what do you mean by HR, sir? HR, HR. When I clocked at my shaft, there was a parade and I was told to go to Boise. Who is Boise, sir? Uba no Boise, no. HR was Eastwell. He's the HR at Eastwell. And if I got. HR was a shaft in number one. He's the. Is the HR the shaft? Eastern Plants. Eastern Plants. Where is uh, Mr. Boise employed? Who is the employee of Boise? He works in the offices. 
uh, or above on the on the on the on the above the the, 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 the shafts. The offices of which company, sir? I'm an office A B in company. Loan mean. Did you oblige to the request? Yeah, nine o'clock on the twenty but this is CIA Yes, after after clocking, I went, I proceeded to him. Boise told us that there was money that had been uh, given, that has been added for RDOs. Where did you find, sorry, where did you find Boise? One for mana and I Boise. I found him in the hall. At the shaft. Was he alone in the hall? Boise was alone uh, in the hall until we, the RDOs, arrives and the RDAs. Roughly how many uh, RDAs and RDOs went to the hall? We were many. We were all paraded uh, according to the jobs that uh, I have uh, referred to. Will you proceed sir, and tell us what happened? Boise told us that there's money added for RDOs and also for RDAs. An RDO that works alone without an assistant would receive of mana. That he would receive an amount of 750. An RDO that uh, does work with, the, uh, with an assistant. Would receive 500. That the RDA would receive 250. Did the RDOs and RDAs accept the proposal put forward by Boise? E RDA, RDOs as in RDAs by Amgela and Endoya Ivezongu Boise. We did not accept it. Were officials of any union uh, present during that discussion? Wagoko Ingo Ked is a union as a coil We ask Poisi, whenever you give us a report, you usually in the company of others, where are they? Others were you to whom were you referring to say? Aba take each each after the Aba Whenever the HR would give us a report, there would be a union representative. Sir, you have already testified before then. Did any of, uh, of the union officials' uh, representatives appear at the meeting? What do you believe? Yes. Said he was coming, and then, in fact, he eventually arrived. Who arrived, sir? Ubani lo wa figam po. Some who is about sir, why wa figa u chipa, chipa. Chipa, chipa is his name. Who is chipa, sir? Ubani lo chipa. U chipa he is shaft steward. He is shaft steward. He is shaft. He is a he is a shaft steward. He is a shaft steward belonging to a union. Which union did he belong to? UAP Union Umfolo. He's with NUM, NAM. Sir, you, you have already testified that you, the RDOs decided not to involve any union in the dispute with uh, Lonmin. Why was it necessary or why did you ask 
whether any union official will be present during that discussion. And it will tell you that the best union is the best union and the best union is the best union. The best union is the best union. The best union is the best union. Sapi, to a little bit of a seat and a half, Sazo Tibana says, Parrot and Poison. But some booze, some booze, some poison, as a shafty. What confused us was we had been discussing this thing on the other side, and here all of a sudden we are being told by Boise when we went to the shafts.
ya upoezi wa ibizili elu ya msaibu uza chafti nuba ya yaz na lente wati ushipa abayaz saati banga isai nige lente jobe nga yaz eye tui mitinga izo ba serve nereko ginayi Boise did call uh, Shiba to um, the <coughs> shaft and uh, we asked Shiba if he knew about this. He said he did not know. We then said to him he should not sign this because our meeting will only be on the day of the holiday. Prior to the 8th of August, uh, do you know if the issue of the increment of the salary of the RDOs and RDAs was taken up with NAM? Pam Gomtaga, 8th of August, okay. Golako Ulazi, Lendo Ye Mivuzo Ye Arti Osne, Arti A Sikaya Vezo, Payabu and UM. I could as I visited. Diva Sang is he visited. No, we did not. Why did uh, the RDOs and uh, RDAs take it a stand or decision that uh, unions will not be involved in the uh, uh, grievance of the RDOs and RTAs? Kwenza hii ndone kubani na hii RTOs na hii RTAs wese nenza history kwa soko bani ya ikupa union na nifu ni kule ndetuwa ya mifuzo. Saati inam aizulisi kanazo zitu. We said NAM does not forward our grievances. Now which grievances did NAM not forward and to whom? Zezi ipiga hii kalazo henga kisisanga inu inga kisisele kubani. Fezi malunga wa ne mali hii sifunayo. These were, these were about wages that we wanted as RDOs, money such as e bonus and general bonus, like bonuses. Did uh, the officials of NAM give any reasons why the issue of the increment of the salary was not uh, taken up? They did not give us a reason. Prior to the RDOs and RDAs embarking on the unprotected strike, was there any hope that the issue of the salary increase will be resolved? If you just repeat the question, sir. Prior to the RDOs and RDAs embarking on the unprotected strike, was there any hope that the issue of the salary increase will be resolved? Pam Gogba, Nina, RDOs, and RDAs, Ningenele, Olu Kangalazo. There was no hope. How did the meeting with uh, Mr. Boise uh, end? The meeting in Anayo, no Boise, Yakiba, what did you want to go back? See the art to all Sinaso Tibana and the Lava Lehuli Ting, Gulus, Gulusin, Evener Code. The decision taken on was that we as RTOs would be meeting uh, on Thursday at one o'clock. Do you remember the date of the proposed meeting? We are Kumbulai date along Tanganoga Gozobamka. Yes, I remember. What's the date, sir? Kaza Kumbula Babunini. The date was the 9th. 2012. 20, uh, August 2012. Was a meeting held on the 9th of August 2012? Yeah, Banjo, a law meeting on the 9th of August 2012. Yes, sir. Did you attend the meeting? Wauko, na apa ogulon tanganso? Tandi ko, na chat. I was present, sir. Roughly how many uh, uh, RDOs and RDAs attended the meeting? Ka unga shoke, kosu tegele la kwaunga wazi RDOs, eza zizinga api amo, zeni pedele no. Hey, we were many, very many. What was discussed at that meeting? The decision, 
made was that on the 10th, the following day, all the RDOs would come together at Honor Corp. That we would not go on duty on the 10th. And that we would march to the time of us. Why was it agreed that the RDOs should not go to work on the 10th? The decision was that we would march to the time office to demand the 12,500 on the 10th. At that meeting was the uh, proposal that was, was made by Mr. Boise on the 8th of August 2012 discussed? Yes, it was mentioned but unaccepted. Were reasons uh, given as to why that proposal was not acceptable to the, both the RDOs and RDAs? We RDOs and we assistant. The, dem the decision that was made was that we would go personally ourselves to take our decision uh, demand to the time office. So my question is that were reasons advanced as to why that proposal of that was made by Mr. Boise not acceptable to both the RDOs and RDAs? There were no reasons given. On the 10th of August, are you aware that a meeting was held? Yes, sir. Did you attend the meeting? Wow, couple of meeting. Yes, I was present. What was discussed during the meeting? I do. What was discussed, sir? 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 What was an amount of 12,500 that we would depart from Vonnerko. Did you take part in the, mar in the march? I was there. Eh? Was an agreement reached as, as to how the grievance was going to be put forward to the management of loan men? Time officer time office. The decision is that we move now to the time office. is demand. With this demand, as we were proceeding towards roll and shaft. We came across uh, the mine security. The, 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 Sorry, the the, we showed them our demand as written on this cardboard, piece of cardboard. The question, is, sorry, sir, the question is, was it discussed how the demand was going to be presented to loan management where all were all the uh, strikers going to talk or what was uh, going to happen? We elected five men to represent us. The first one was Boy, Bele, B-H-E-L-E. -E. Another person was of Strana speaking. His name was Lumtana Andres. Andres. 
and then there was a Sutu speaking person. You have given us uh, four names. Do you remember the fifth name? Usnige Baba ne apa upoi no pele nalomzwana nalomzotu omye. Kwagundi is was kwagundi mo kwagundi mo. The next one was myself. Now, during the march to time office, how was the mood of the protesters? Aguiwa ke paya nisi ya paya. Um, na nani zifani jani jenga ba sevens. Zasi kama ne nengo si si ya si si ya gumkulumlu, singa wa singa singa na singa na. We were very peaceful as we were proceeding. Singa kula na si peti njama sham. Only had some branches we did not have. We were not armed. Did. The strikers ultimately reached time office. Not in a figure again. A time office. You know, back in the days. Last year, I was at time office. It's a far, 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 far long. I'm a police. I'm a government. When we turned towards the time office, we were stopped there by the government police. At asina lunge lo gusonde na tawa mo office si banga aga. But in face this colors of seed. We were not allowed to go to the office in such numbers. Uh, we should tell them what our grievance is. Bele gave them the demands which were written on a cardboard piece. They went to the office, that is the police chairperson, and they came back with the employer, speaking of a white person. Lomlu ngwaya wafika ukuthi wathetha nobhele wathi ufuna umuntu owazi silungu wathetha nobhele came to us and he spoke to Bele he said he wanted somebody that understands the white man's language do you know what was discussed with Bele o yakumbroba wathetha intoni nobhele mabethethe silungu they were speaking in a white man's language did Bele tell uh, the protesters protesters what was discussed he said to us he had given him the demands as written on the box. The white person then proceeded to the officers. Did you get any response from uh, loan men management? Na fuma na ge imbendulo evela ku management ya loan men. Ya tinga kwa inga kwa bui la mlu kwa mofisi nsambale la i fifteen i fifteen i fifteen minutes. We before he came back from the office, Mr. Chairperson, we counted fifteen minutes for him. Sa sa chis lock ni sa song la kwa mama office. We then started the slogan and started proceeding towards the offices. Ama police amba pangu to a escort ya sa ya kwa mama office. The police escorted us. They were walking in front of us towards the offices. When we arrived at the offices, there was marked off with a danger tape. Uko amantu mbaza, uko ama police ama government, nama po nama security imai ni amantu mbaza na aifage irama ama rapa bulleti, awa fage sneni ngam. There were a number of policemen, the government policemen, including females, who had rubber bullets along their hips. Kule danger tip, kwa tiwa singi, kusinga, singa nyati, lise kwenye hapa ya kukenye klas. We want not to go over, to go across this danger tip to the other side. Who want the strikers not to go beyond the danger tip? Kwa nige lo wanlo mke saka njalo kwa nige kwa danger tip leni. Kwa tuwa singa agufu menigamba, agusi soji ni maofisi ni sibanga. We were told that we are not allowed to come to the near the offices in such numbers. Who said so? Who said so? Who said so? The police who had uh, deployed the uh, danger team. The strikers get any feedback from the representative of loan men management? management Yai wapo malumlu ngo ofisi, what lumlu kuti? 
That white man emerged from the office, Mr. Chairperson, and he said to us, Wacheta no pele wat, it demand is, it demand is the mali, ama union is wacheta ngazongo 2013, I, 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 agreement gunya. He said that the, the, the demands would be addressed by the, 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 the union in 2013, and that is the agreement with the union. That we to go back to work, and our strike, as, as our strike is uh, illegal. Was that answer acceptable to the strikers? We did not accept it. What transpired then, sir? Envagogo was a vendor and donigue. O pale, a wire, a coolman or boy, a term of his. What, O pale, long, long, who sends a opo pie? John Bell then spoke to boy. He said to boy, This white man is turning us into, into Popeyes. What, John Balum, we see to so tata it is each action, Abandabanga Pamilanga and Flanzi, Tina action, see tata walk. As he said, this white man says action would be taken against the people who did not go to work today. We are taking action now. What is your understanding of the word Popeye? Ka eti loans or Popeye, Wagung Bau Popeye Loindon. Popeye is a spark. Popeye is a stupid person. Chair, I'm going to refer to item 39 of uh, bundle B, which is a, a new exhibit. Item 39, that's correct. City, city press report. So, say. On the 10th of August 2012. Uh, oh, the new amended, I'm sorry, the new, this is the new amended stuff. But, uh, I was referring to the old one. Do you want this to be an exhibit? It would be. be Exhibit and the Lyo, because of the Rabom Pegasu X. This won't be shown on the Lamini. Can a warning be given that this uh, photo should not be published or distant? I did um, make some suggestions earlier about when. Um, members of the media must be uh, note that this photograph must not be publicised or published or broadcast outside. Mm -hmm. If there's a simultaneous broadcast of what is happening now, then of course the, the, um, the police is through the church and we can't put it back again. If there's a simultaneous broadcast of what is happening now, then Sir, do you have an uh, item that is exhibit quadruple uh, A9 with you there? Unayo, the exhibit at Tetangayo, number nine, Apogu and Pegas. I just. Ah, no. Mr. Mkotedi, will you kindly show the witness uh, the relevant exhibit? That is item 39 of bundle, I mean it's bundle B.
Merci, Jesse. The response was yes, sir. Person, just asking for a moment. Chairperson, I'm asking for a direction that probably it would be best if we could put this uh, uh, photo on the screen, but uh, an odd, a ruling be granted that uh, the cameras should be switched off so that, you know, we should be in a position to can see who he identifies. Okay, broadcast camera must be turned off while the photograph is put on the screen. Um, and, of course, the ruling I previously gave Relating to the <coughs> prohibition of the publication of photographs and so forth, the applies to this also. In the video, I will come up with a video. I will come up with a video. I will come up with a video. I will come up with a Thanks, Chair. And what's the problem? Thank you.
Mr. Makaraba is a person or a thing, he asks a leading question, who are you referring to? Well, you can't. That's exactly the point we are debating. What did you mean by using the expression Makaraba? What were you referring to? What to whom were you referring to? underground. We are a PP store. safety as Chairperson Makarapa is something that is issued when people go underground, issued by the by, by the stores, PP, which is known as a Makarapa. When equipment from these stores, uh, Mr. Chairperson, that is the Makarapa, you get uh, the goggles, you get the something that closes the, the, the ears, and uh, you get hand gloves. I thought he said gum boots as well. Safety equipment and, 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 and gum boots as well. And then he added, this is equipment intended for safety. Uh, for people working inside the ground. When we speak of the mountain, Chairperson, uh, and referring to Makaraba, we are referring to the mochi that we consumed on the mountain. We will come back to is, this issue of the Makarapas and Muti at a later stage. S sir, I'm referring you to Exhibit Triple E1 of Bundle A. It's the statement of Mzotolo Makidwana. Marcus Jong, the statement is Mzotolo Makidwana, a single E31. Paragraph 4. As John of Agum Tatu has seen, it reads as follows On or about the 10th or the 11th of August 2012, I got wind of the fact that the rock drill operators had taken a decision to go on strike. They also appealed to other workers who were not RDOs to join the strike. Some of the workers told me that they had been stopped from going to work. I would like you to comment on the last sentence of the paragraph. Some of the workers told me that they had been stopped from going to work. It is so. Are you in a position to state why? The workers, other workers were stopped from going to work. Uh, I don't understand this evidence. Now. The witness has been just been asked to comment on the last sentence, which is that some of the workers told Magidwana or whatever they told him, and he says that is so. What is so? Is it that some of the workers told Magidwana that, or what? And um, then suddenly we jump to to um, the fact that, in fact, people were stopped from, from going to work. But I ask you a question. Council, for the please put to you that Mr. Magdiwan had said in his statement that some of the workers told him they'd been stopped from going to work. And you, when that put, passage was put to you, you agree. What did you mean by, by saying you agree? Oh, okay. Yes, 
John has his Puma a time of facing the chain. Whoever taking over in night shifts is a vala over a week warm so so in our lady banga pangi. This is a weird FC of Bella if they go eleven. Chairperson, the decision that was taken when we left um, the, uh, the, the stadium was that we are going to close the night shift not to function and that we would come back to the stadium on the 11th. Anyway. Yeah. That is how it happens. Uh, and then some of the people did not get this message. We woke up from the places where we were residing on the 11th and went back to Kwanako. On our way to one of Corp Chairperson, we saw mine security with certain workers escorting them on their way to work. Sorry, he said certain work. Um, members of NUM. Oh yes, yes, and um, I'm sorry, and, and and officials of the NUM escorting the workers who are going to work. Were you armed when you went to the meeting? Ka, is the you uh, in plural or in singular terms? Was sorry, was was the witness armed? When I go back on for about two minutes, I will see a pair of. I was, I was not armed. Now, will you proceed and tell us, uh, you know, you say you saw uh, NAM people uh, on your way to work, uh, to this uh, meeting, what were they doing? Ibone abantu benu mkani si apaya indagantu ini wa serbentu they were the rolling shaft escorting people that were proceeding to work. We went, we went past in the bus in which we were traveling and so at the crossing where we got tech where we get taxis. So Tiwana will land this meeting this meeting sport ground We went back to the meeting place where we had uh, been meeting in the uh one of stadium. What is it is it Kribo Blanda? What to um to on a patanga store, Magalang of Funis Tobe? The decision made there was that anybody who does not have an arm should go and get a weapon. Second is it called is it called what Tina Singh has patanga size or is ten by Gani? Those of us who did not have arms then went to buy some at Ngane. So the issue of, of uh, NAM officials transporting people to work, was it discussed? Yes. It was said that NAM is rendering our strike ineffective weak. They are escorting people to work. What preceded the decision to, to arm yourselves? Then the Ogobani Pate's Cobo, Yafela, Ganja, and Gratua, and Gratua, and Pate's Cobo. What are to I see Cribo, a city in arm, John by Pushel Abantu, Ababa by M. Sibizi, Masia, and Sio Buda in Army Office? Chairperson, it was decided that since Nam is escorting uh, people pushing them towards work we should get weapons to go and kill them in the offices how was the killing of them going to be conducted we went back to the settlement where we had to get weapons. We Sa met again. Natata. Natata is a clay was over. Whoa, was it showing on? We then decided now we are going to take make a song. Ingo, Ingo, my AICT. 
The song went this way, Jefferson. How are we going to kill this num? We hate Zogwan. We went in through the gate, the one at the top there, and we went down the hostel. Sorry. Singing the song. As you were marching to Nam office, were you armed? Very patient here, office in the Nam near Angel Kobe. That's Kobe, let's pay. Yes, all of us were armed. With what were you armed? Nani Kobe and Gandoni. Sipete a bush knife in the condo. We had pangas, we had asigai. Where did you get the weapons from? Nani is from an APS is trouble. Some had their weapons with them. Some went to buy some at Ingani. Some went to Njebe. Njebe is spelled N T S H E B E. It's a place at Ingani. You personally, where did you get the? From where did you buy the weapons? Where Nangogwako is a place called Bastenga. That's Tenga Ingani. I bought mine, push knife, no cold. I bought a panga push knife and a spear. But where did you get it from? Where, where what, did you? What, what was Tolapi? Was Kwana? Was Tenga? That's Tenga. I bought them at Tengani. Did you buy from the store? Was did Tenga? And did you buy from the shop? Or Tenga? No, we must in jail. And you cook with it. Uh, from the Sheikh settlements, from the Sheikh settlements. You've referred to Njebe. Who's Njebe? Utetengo Njebe, Ngubanu Njebe. Uko ono Njebe, Ushala Ngani, Nikutuwa Wanchebe, Pangani. Person who stays at Ngani is known as, his home is known as the home of Njebe. So, Mr. Mabuya Kulu testified, and his evidence is to be found in the transcript, day 48, that is uh, page 5266. Uh, that would be from line 19. I'm going to read you the relevant uh, uh, evidence. We met at. Going to the two of Mabuya Kul, Abayate, Talamas, and Zakfundelawa, Abo Esi Tikwana. Sorry, starting from line 19. It reads as follows. We met again the following day at about 9 o'clock. I, I arrived there at about 9 in the morning. We discussed. People came with different views. Seeing things differently about what transpired on the 10th. As a result of these discussions, some people came out with the ideas that why don't we go to the NAM and ask them why is it that they don't want the employer to talk to us because the person who employs us is the employer and they the num are in the offices because of us a report was also received by others who made a report that some people had been shot by members of the NAM who were driving in a quantum that is owned by the mine. There were also reports Mr. Chairperson, that some of the people 
that had gathered there with us later went to the buses to go and find out what is happening and when they arrived at the buses they were pointed Guns were pointed at them and they were told to get to work forcefully. The decision that was then arrived at there was that we go to the NAM to go and inquire from them as to why they do not want us they employer to talk to us. Now, according to the version of Mr. Mabuya Kulu, the reason why the march proceeded to Nam was to go and inquire from them as to why they do not want us, they do not want the employer to talk to them. This is at the sense of Oba, who went to visit us, Oba Mabuya Kulu, and we office the Nam. What is your comment about that? No, it is not so we are going to kill it. During the evidence in chief of Mr. Zogwana, that is day 46, uh, three reasons were given were put to him by Advocate Dalim Pofu as to why the strikers marched to NAM's offices. That is to be found at page 5031. Uh, from line 8. The relevant uh, section is from Lion 15. Exactly do what I have just said to you. Once to inquire as to why all of a sudden, unlike 2005, unlike all these other times, the union is suddenly standing in, the, in their way. This is the first reason that was given to uh, Mr. Zogwana as to why the protest strikers much to NAMS office. What is your comment? What is this? I just have a go to one of the other side. So far, we should apply a go to all five. When they can join in go to get over by in union in and they can come to see and get some fun to go to as a theater. Now. Are you not in a position to comment, sir? The first reason that was uh, advanced as to why the protesters marched to the office of NAM was that NAM was standing in their way. We had gone to kill it in the office. The second reason advanced uh, that was given to Mr. Zogwana is to be found at page 5032. The relevant portion thereof is to be found at uh, lines 24 to 25 going to 5033. Namely that uh, allegations that strikers had been assaulted or forced to go to work. That was the reason why, the second reason why the strikers marched to Nam. What is your comment?
Nobody was assaulted. The question that I'm putting to you is that the reason, the second reason advanced to Mr. Zogwana as to why the protesters marched to the office of NAM, it's because there were allegations that strikers had been assaulted or forced to go to work. What is your comment? Post by NAM. Uchi is his address, it's been. Wabuti wa inu mle ya ibeta bandu iba nyanze lo baba baye mbangele uchi wa bega esosi za hatu. No, it is not so. The last and third reason advanced is to be found at page 5033 from line 1 and that was one of the issues which was going to be raised and before you answer the third issue was that if indeed the union was the only conduit through which they could pass their demands to the employer then the NAM should do so as it were, even though they were not all NAM members. Itige isi zate se state sa bewa uti ka umkeshi enga wazo ba tete nabo inu mjengwe tranganto emele abasebenzi no menga melanga bonke iyo efani lo kubwa ekiti se infuno za abo isi se umkeshi. What is your comment, sir? If you would repeat the question again, sir. The, th the third reason advanced as to why the strikers marched to uh, the office of NAM was because even if all the strikers did not belong to NAM, NAM was the conduit or the medium through which the, the uh, concerns could be dealt with. What is your comment about that? I don't think that's quite a complete summary of what we said. What we said was that the third reason was that if Nung was the only conduit or the only medium through which messages could be passed to the employer, then Nung should do so even if the messages they were asked to pass or the demands they were asked to pass came not from people who were members of Nung but workers who were not members of Nung. Thank you, sir. Some Thanks, sir. We're not all, we're not, all people from the demands came, were not all Nung members. Because we were armed, Mr. Chairperson, with uh, pangas and spears. We had gone oh, in the office. Nobody has the right to go to any person's house with sharp instruments. If one is carrying two sticks, uh, for instance, Jefferson, and you're going to somebody's house, you leave the one stick at the house before arriving at your final destination. Don't go to a person's house armed. Sir, will you proceed and describe the events that unfolded during the march to NAM office? Down there, as we are proceeding towards the second gate, this which is next to the taxi rank. Some young people who were wearing security uh, uh, clothes appeared from the side of the offices. We had two um, uh, uh, shots being fired in our direction. 
Along the way, I saw two people who were lying there bleeding. He went past them to the place where we had originally met. Sir, can, I, can you please uh, deal with the persons that, that fired? Are you in a position to describe them? Do you know them? The people I saw, Chairperson, were people wearing the uniform that is usually worn by the security that uh, yeah. is buttoned up here, showing the direction of the chest. Are you in a position to state uh, for which company those security people are employed? Loan me. Loan me. Are they the security people, the only people that fired shots? Those are the ones I saw, yes. Do you know if any shots were fired from within the office of NAM? I only saw these two that I've mentioned. Now you testify, did on your way to back to the copy, did you... Tell the copy, is it back to the place where they came from? Sorry, on your, stadium, right? on your return to the meeting place, did you uh, on the way come or meet people who had sustained any injuries? Yes, I saw two people who were lying on the ground. That he said two people were bleeding because they were past me in my alleys. Were past me. Uh, is this perhaps a convenient stage for us to take the theatre? Then Bali, please hello, go back. I guess it's in your shock. I'm not going to turn for good now. Tata, 15 minutes and go.
African languages are such that they are word order differs from English and Africans. So I'm going to ask Council to read the whole sentence. You, you have that. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, sir. May I exchange with my colleagues? I received a message in chamber to the effect that the witness wasn't feeling well. Would you like to just question him about that shortly? And then we will decide whether we can continue to it should in all fairness continue today or whether we should adjourn till tomorrow. But perhaps you could just ask him a few questions about that first so we can get a, a basis for deciding whether we will carry on or not today. Thanks, Chairperson. Sir, are you in a position to, uh, how, how are you feeling at the moment? We can proceed. Are you sure about that, sir? Can say it. Can say it. I am sure. Um, that, that disposes of that issue. But please, in future, make sure your sentence, your questions have got nouns and subjects and, and verbs. If necessary, objects as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Might I? Uh, and we're going to have to ask the witness uh, straightforward. I think uh, he might be understanding us to be saying something like continue with the evidence. If, if, if there is, is a, no This is a commission, Mr. Semenya. If you'd like to ask the witness a question, even though Mr. Matabedi is leading his evidence, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. What we are trying to establish is Mr. Mokotedi informs us that you are fatigued. Is, is, is that correct? Mr. Mokotedi informs us that you are fatigued. Is that correct? Mr. Mokotedi informs us that you are fatigued. Okay, for me, I'm thinking that. Probably thinking for me. Is this, is, is this thinking for you correct, though? Who think I write again? What? Try to about it. I ask my colleague. No? We may proceed. The horse was taken to water but wasn't thirsty enough. Um, carry on, Mr. Vesey. <laughs> Sir, we are at the stage where the protesters have uh, returned to where they initially met. And yes, Mr. Did any discussion take place at the meeting place? Konage in Oko in the twenty twenty and the Gleo Paglanda out to Genovo. Sasa Timasa Zamu Tibana Power of Mansa Uti Upen and Masenu and the Santa Power, Maseku Pin, Linda Osiguele, his same wine. We tried to gather there, but Ben said we should go further up near the Gobi because where we were, it's near the mine. What was uh, the response of the strikers that gathered at the meeting place? We agreed with that proposal of going further up. F further up, where did the uh, strikers go? Going to the copy. Upon arriving at the copy, what happened?
ekizana na abantu bani melewa abana sibashi ngini sibashi lebe leli pa bibi ibani he was trying to cleanse them get rid of bad luck since they had walked uh, on the path of those people we walk past lying there babene ilai abantu ibashiza people who was praying cling with water were standing in a line china sai senyuke langa sentla e pai kupi continued walking up to No, I did not go to the line. I went further up to where we're going to meet. But were you present at the place where the sprinkling or the cleansing occurred? No, I walked past them. And what happened further, sir? Si sofi ya ulanda au ekopi ni wati upele wa sisi meeting wati matiote masikulu le ilo ilo kwa sisi 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 mbe ipulu kwa matiote. When we got to the copy at the place of the meeting, Ben said we should pele. Not Ben pele said we should take off the dresses and put on the pants. What does that mean, sir? It's a gentleman, now it's time we should get an Inyanga or Sangoma who is well known, who is very who is tight. What was the response of the strikers? He agreed with that proposal. Did he give the details of the Inyanga? Yeah, why Vela Ukeza was a flexiaf? A proof in what Ukeza, he called a Inyanga, Ayazio, Ayase Pizana, Ayase number eight, a good Chagunzade. Was a little bit bizarre. Kaza came up with the name of Inyanga. Kaza from from Flagstaff. He said there is an Inyanga from Bizana, from number eight. What talking about Kamala? Unzabe. They said uh, the Inyanga's name is Nzabe. Nzabe N Z A B E. What was your understanding that the Inyanga must be tied? Inyanga, a tie to Kon Bakutuan Galon. Inyanga, I as you by Yawazu, Emele, Emela Umkos, Inyanga, but you are above Neba, Abema Matu. And Inyanga would make people brave, would lead the warriors. How was the Inyanga going to make the people brave? Ibiza, Benz and Jange, Baba Benes, Benda, and Tulinyanga. It was decided that donations be made and the Inyanga be fetched 